What's up everyone, I'm Nikhil from Greedy Tech and this is an unboxing of the Techno Camon i2X. So this is the box that Techno has sent me, this is a review unit and looking at the size of the box I was really excited, thought it might have two or three phones but from my surprise there was only one phone with a quick thank you card and it was kind of disappointing but one is more than enough anyway. So at the top over here their team has taken up some effort to do this kind of an artwork I guess. And this is supposed to be their campaign which is Har Surat Kub Surat and this is a hashtag Techno Har Surat Kub Surat. Now this is their thank you card and quite a long one. Now this is the phone, at least the box of it. Now I've already unboxed it for the Telugu channel that's Greedy Tech Telugu and I've just repackaged it again to unbox it in English for all you guys on Greedy Tech. So this is the box, now let me just put this thing aside. So guys, here's the box and on the front we have a quick preview of the phone and at the top left it says Techno, on the right side we have three highlighting features which happen to be one extra month of warranty and 100 day replacement, that's the regular one. And at the bottom it says Camon i2X. Now the main highlighting features of this phone are obviously the cameras, especially the front facing camera and the new display with the notch. By the way, this is also their first phone with the notch and this is how the phone looks. We'll look at it in person but this is a quick preview. And on the back we have the pricing, IMEA numbers and so on. Now this phone is priced at 12,500 rupees and at that price in the online segment we do have some pretty good alternatives but this is a retail only phone. Now this is the phone and surprisingly they even put a mirror on the front with the hashtag techno hat surat kub surat. Once again their marketing campaign. So let me just put the phone aside for now. Next we have the soft silicone pouch which I really appreciate. Next we have the regular documentation and it says 12 plus 1 that's the warranty period. Next we have the micro USB charging cable, SIM card ejector and a 6 watt power adapter. Now for a price of 12,500 rupees they should have given us at least a 10 watt power adapter. It's not fast charging but at least it would have been better than this charger. So these are all the contents of the box. There are no earphones like always. Now coming back to the phone, here's the mirror just slide it off or peel it off and this is how it comes off. Now this is how the phone looks on the front and this is how it looks on the back with a super glossy finish and except for the realme phones this is probably the only phone in this price segment which comes with a shiny pattern like this. Apart from Infinix phones like the Infinix Note 5 which happens to be a sister company for Techno. So Techno, Infinix, all these brands are owned by the same company I guess it's called Transient Smart I guess. So they have been in India for a pretty long time and they have been making some pretty good phones and this is definitely one of them. Now why? I'll talk about that in the end but for now let's just get on with the physical overview and check out the specs. Now on the back this phone has a plastic bill with a fiberglass with a 2.5D curve and the central frame is made of metal but also comes with a shiny glossy plaint which also looks pretty good on this aqua blue color. By the way this phone, I guess I've already said it, is priced at 12,500 rupees and it's available in three colors, blue, black and gold and it is a retail only phone so you might not be able to buy it online on Amazon or Flipkart. Now with that said coming back to the physical overview, at the top we have the dual camera setup with a 13 megapixel primary camera followed by a 5 megapixel secondary camera for depth sensing that's followed by quad LED flash. Beside that we have the fingerprint scanner and techno branding. At the bottom it is completely plain. Now on the front we have a pretty massive 6.2 inch display with HD plus resolution with a new notch in the new 19 is to 9 aspect ratio. Now the notch houses a 16 megapixel front facing camera with a front flash, earpiece and some sensors. At the bottom it is completely plain but it has a pretty big chin. Now this one also comes with a free screen guard pre applied which is a pretty nice touch. At the top it is completely plain, on the right side it has a power and volume buttons made of metal and they have a nice clicky sound to them. At the bottom it has a single speaker grill, micro USB charging port, primary microphone and the 3.5mm audio jack. On the left side it has a sim card tray housing two nano sim slots along with a dedicated SD card slot. Now a dedicated SD card slot is a pretty rare thing to see but these days almost all the brands are offering it without any issues. So that's no longer a highlighting feature. Now coming to the rest of the specs, this phone sports a MediaTek MTK6762 octa-core processor with 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage running Android 8.1 Oreo with a decently large 3750mAh battery. Now finally this phone has a thickness of 7.9mm and weighs just 150 grams. Now considering the entire form factor and the huge battery, phone really feels pretty light in weight. Now that's really incredible because phones like Redmi Note 5 or the Note 5 Pro 
which come with a similarly sized 4000 mAh battery, almost weigh 180 grams. So Tecno has done a pretty good job when it comes to weight management. Now this is the free case that we get inside the box, so let me just put it on. Now this is how the phone looks with the case on. Now it has cutouts for the fingerprint scanner, camera module, even the quad LED flash. And the ports at the bottom are very well concealed with these flaps. So even if you drop your phone accidentally in water, using these flaps, damage can be minimized. Now this phone has a raised lip for the camera module. So even if you place your phone directly on its back, cameras won't get scratched. And because of the cutout for the fingerprint scanner and a pretty huge chin, it's much more easily accessible and traceable. So personally, I like this case and I wish other brands also offer something like this, especially Samsung should do it for at least phones that they price around 24,000 rupees, like the Samsung A7 Plus. So guys, this is the phone. Now let me just turn it on, configure it and then see what we get right out of the box. So guys, fingerprint scanner is pretty fast. Fastest I've seen, especially in this price segment. Usually registration takes quite some time, but for some reason it was super fast on this phone. So this phone is running custom skin version of Android called HiOS. And this is how it looks like. Now from initial impressions, it looks like there is no app drawer on this phone, but this button over here is for the app drawer. Now you can also do the swipe up gesture, just like the Pixel phones or the Google phones to open the app drawer. So that's pretty good. Now let's check the free RAM. Now there are no apps running in the background. So out of that 4 GB of RAM, we have about 1.7 GB of free RAM. Now coming to the storage, let's go to settings. So out of that 64 GB of storage, we get about 55 GB of space for our user apps and user data. Now this is the about page with software information. This one is running iOS version 4.1 based on Android 8.1.0, that's Oreo. So it's pretty latest. And it even has a good security patch. Now that's pretty good. By the way guys, my brother has been using the Techno Cam on iClick phone and that phone has been getting regular software updates. Even if there are any bugs with any update, it is being fixed pretty quickly. So even this phone which is priced similarly should be getting regular software updates. Now coming to the cameras, this is how they look. Let me just give the permissions. Now this is the interface for the red camera. Nothing really has changed from the previous cam on phones. So first we have the AI camera which is automatically supposed to detect the scene and improve the images, especially the color reproduction. Next we have the bokeh mode which is just portrait mode for the red camera. Now finally coming to the video, this is the interface and we can record video in 1080p resolution, but there is no electronic image stabilization or any kind of stabilization on this phone. Now this is the interface for the front facing camera and just from initial impressions, I can say that the front facing camera on this phone is going to be really good. And this is the AI mode, next we have the beauty mode, here we can change the beauty levels. It also has AI beauty mode just like the Oppo phones. Next we have bokeh mode which is portrait selfies. Finally we have panorama which Samsung calls wide angle selfie or wider selfies. So that's the camera interface. Now these are some sample pictures taken using the front end red cameras. i2x at 1080p resolution audio is from the phone itself so check out the nice cancellation and stabilization offered by the phone uh, it doesn't seem like there is any stabilization like there's no electronic image stabilization or optical image stabilization but the footage looks pretty decent color reproduction is also pretty good so let me know how it is by comment section below So guys, this is the sample footage recorded using the front facing camera of the Tecno Camon i2X at 1080p resolution, audio is from the phone itself, so check out the noise cancellation and stabilization offered by the phone. <laughs> Now this is the app drawer once again and these are all the apps that comes pre-installed. Now one of the most highlighting features of this phone is called Freezer and this is how it looks like and using this feature we can simply freeze applications. 
so you can add applications to the list and once you add them those applications will not be allowed to run in the background so it's a very small handy feature that will help you improve battery life and it also helps to have a better performance so that's a super handy feature now let's test the fingerprint scanner i've already set it up so here we go fingerprint scanner is super fast probably not as fast as oppo f7 vivo v9 which are like super fast but this is like the second best thing i've seen ever so fingerprint scanner is insanely fast and it's pretty accurate as well now let's test face unlock so let me just show you the front facing camera so you can see what the front camera is looking at so this is me there's a pretty huge light over here and i'm not wearing any glasses and it's unlocking the phone pretty quickly it's not insanely fast like the oppo or vivo phones not even fast as the poco f1 obviously they are pretty high in price but it's not super fast but it is working and it's taking like a half a second which is definitely manageable now i'll try it with my eyes closed okay it seems to be working even with closed eyes now i've turned off all the lights so let's see if it will work and it is still working definitely much slower than valid conditions but it is surprisingly working pretty well and it is pretty fast so that's the lock screen and unlock so guys even in low lighting conditions it's pretty fast now i'll be using my glasses or wearing them and it is still working with glasses on in complete low lighting conditions so guys face unlock on this phone has really impressed me i've really never seen any phone do this well at least in this price segment to unlock the phone with facial data with glasses on in complete pitch darkness so fingerprint scanner and face unlock are pretty good now for the final test let's test the speaker loudness So guys, speaker loudness on this phone is pretty good. It is sufficiently loud for media consumption, ringtones and alarms. It's not super loud but it is definitely sufficiently loud enough. Now before I conclude, these are the Android 2 benchmark scores. Now earlier in the video I said there is something really good about this phone. That's not the build, that's really not the cameras and face and lock of fingerprint scanner but it's actually the software optimization. Now this phone has a pretty entry level processor and it's definitely not all that powerful and for a price tag of 12500 rupees we can get a Snapdragon 636 or a Helio P60 processor with phones like Nokia 5.1, Realme 1, Asus M1 and so on but I can definitely tell you that because of the software optimization on this phone it will be as responsive as those phones. Obviously it won't be fast enough to open applications faster than those phones but the overall software responsiveness of the techno phones is really good. As I've said, my brother has been using the Techno Cam on iClick for about 3 months now and he literally loves that phone. It doesn't come with a Snapdragon 660 or the 636. It has the same old MediaTek chip but still it feels pretty responsive. So guys, if you are looking to buy a phone in the retail market with good cameras, good build, bigger battery, then I can definitely suggest you this phone. So guys, what do you think about this phone? Do let me know by commenting below this video and if you want more information about this phone, link will be in the description and if you want us to make any specific video, tweet out to us with the hashtag AskGreedyTech on Twitter and I'll try to make it as soon as possible. I'm Nikhil from GreedyTech signing off, have a nice day.